On the bench today is this Yesu FRG7 general coverage communications receiver that belongs to my friend John W82MOL. This receiver incorporates an interesting architecture called a Wadley loop that was originally developed by Dr. Trevor Wadley in the 1940s. The Wadley loop is a superheterodyne architecture that is drift canceling and that's what makes it unique. Back in the days before uh, synthesized uh, variable frequency oscillators or VFOs, uh, drift in the first LO of a receiver was a big concern. The frequency stability of a typical superheterodyne style general coverage receiver is dominated by the stability of the first local oscillator or VFO. Uh, typically the VFO is tunable over the entire frequency range that the receiver is designed to operate over and typically operates at a frequency above the receiver's frequency range. So given that it's operating at a high frequency and tunable over such range, uh, making these VFOs stable and with very little drift over time and temperature was a difficult thing to do. The Wadley loop overcomes this problem not by making a very stable VFO, but by simply canceling the drift that might occur in that VFO. I find it very interesting to take a look at some old technology like this Wadley loop and the unique way that it solved a problem because you never know when you might need a unique solution to a modern problem. So let's take a look at how the Wadley loop works. The Wadley loop is a triple conversion architecture. It may look a little complicated in this block diagram, but it really is quite simple to understand. Let's walk through it step by step. So the front end, uh, we've got our input signal coming from the antenna and preamp and things like that goes, that goes into the first mixer. Of course, driving that first mixer also is our first local oscillator. This is the one whose drift that we're always so concerned about. The output of that first mixer gives us a number of mixing components and uh, primarily the two that we're interested in would be the local oscillator frequency plus or minus our input frequency. Usually we're interested in only one of those, the summer difference, and it's usually the difference. So we're going to use a bandpass filter to give us just the local oscillator minus FN. That becomes our first IF. Now of course this is no different from any other superheterodyne receiver. Uh, I should note also that the numbers that I've indicated here for frequencies are the numbers that are specific to this Yesu FRG7. So we can see, for example, that the first local oscillator is tunable from 55.5 megahertz up to 84.5 megahertz, or over about a 29 megahertz frequency range. So the first IF frequency uh, in the ASU FRG7 is centered at uh, 55 megahertz. Now, of course, any drift that is in this uh, first VFO is also going to result in frequency drift uh, coming here at the first IF. So how do we cancel it? This is kind of where the magic of the Wadu can drift canceling loop comes in. That same local oscillator signal is also mixed in another mixer with a crystal controlled oscillator. Uh, crystal controlled oscillators are typically very stable. In this case it's a 1 MHz crystal oscillator. But it goes through a harmonic generator. That harmonic generator takes that single frequency 1 MHz output and outputs essentially a comb of frequencies you know, at every harmonic of that uh, 1 megahertz uh, frequency up to and, and a little bit past 30 megahertz. So the output that comes here is at 1 megahertz, 2, 3 megahertz, 4, 5, 6, 7 megahertz, etc. up to at least 32 megahertz. Those, all those signal tones, if you will, are present into the other input of this mixer. So now at the output of this mixer, we're going to have essentially uh, the mixing components of the first local oscillator frequency plus or minus all of these tones from the comb generator. So this composite of all these mixing tones gets applied through a narrow bandpass filter that in the case of the FRG7 is tuned to 52.5 megahertz and has a bandwidth of less than one megahertz. So what is that going to do? It's essentially going to select just one of those components, one of the difference components between that local oscillator and the comb. Let's look at the bottom of the band, for example, at 55.5 megahertz here. When that is mixed with the 3 megahertz tone, that will wind up with a signal coming out here at 52.5. But as this tunes up, that signal will walk out of this filter, and if we keep tuning the VFO up, then once we're 4 megahertz away, then the 4 megahertz component will come through here. 
So essentially at every one megahertz through the tuning range of this dial, we're going to pass a signal uh, out of this uh, bandpass filter that is at 52.5 megahertz. That becomes our second LO and we use that to mix with the output from the first IF filter which creates essentially uh, another set of sum and difference frequencies this signal right here plus or minus FLO2 and again we use a bandpass filter to select just one of those and what we're going to select is the FLO minus FN which is essentially our input signal that we're looking for minus FLO2 that's the signal that appears here and again in the case of the FRG7 this bandpass filter is centered at two and a half megahertz and a bandwidth of about one meg so let's take a look at how this canceled the drift. If we take a look at the signal that's here, uh, that's our FLO1 uh, minus FN, so that's the frequency we've got coming in here uh, from our bandpass filter, minus the local oscillator 2 frequency. Now remember, the local oscillator 2 frequency is essentially equal to the VFO frequency minus the comb. That, we'll put that and expand that equation down here. Now if we just sum all this up, we see that the FLO, the frequency from the local oscillator, drops out of the equation. And what we're left with here is a frequency that is dominated only by our input frequency, which is what we want to listen to, and the comb frequency, which is crystal controlled. So now regardless of how much drift is on our original uh, first local oscillator, it drops out of the equation at this point. So we've essentially canceled the drift of that first LO. And that's really the magic of the Wadley loop. So what we're left with after, uh, at this point here, is a one megahertz uh, bandwidth selected uh, portion of the spectrum that is essentially free of any drift from that local oscillator. So then we just mix it a, a third time here now with a, another VFO that we can adjust over a, just a narrow one megahertz frequency range that will allow us to select the desired frequency within the one megahertz bandpass of this uh, uh, second IF. And then that is essentially the uh, output that will go to your conventional bandpass filtering and detectors uh, for the rest of the receiver. So the tuning of a Wadley loop style receiver involves two dials. One to select the one megahertz frequency band that we want to go listen to within the entire frequency coverage of the receiver and then a second dial to fine tune over that one megahertz frequency range to the uh, desired signal of interest. So let's take a look at a few of these signals inside the FRG7. So here is our first local oscillator. You might be able to read on the scope here the frequency counter measurement currently showing 56.54 megahertz and this is adjusted using the megahertz dial on the FRG7. So this allows us to select which one megahertz frequency band we want to tune to. The little lock uh, LED here actually goes out when you're properly centered on that one megahertz frequency band. That indicates that I've got a signal coming out of that second bandpass filter uh, from that uh, comb generator. So this is tunable all the way up uh, a little bit past uh, 85 megahertz so that we can cover the entire frequency range uh, inside the receiver. So the process of tuning this receiver is to select which one megahertz frequency band you want to go tune to uh, with the megahertz dial first. That's our first LO. Okay, here is the output of the harmonic generator that is taking the one megahertz crystal oscillator and creating the harmonics that are used to mix with the VFO for the essentially drift canceling second mixer. So this is the output. If we take a look at this in the frequency domain by simply putting the FFT on here, and let's expand the scale of that a little bit. Let's go 10 dB division, expand this up vertically, and I'm going to change my time scale to change the uh, frequency range of the FFT, and let's turn off channel 1 just so we can kind of see what's going on here. So here's the FFT result of that signal. So we say I got about five megahertz per division here. So we can see I've got, you know, at every tick mark, if you will, I've got a one megahertz, two megahertz, three megahertz, four megahertz, five megahertz. I've got signals every one megahertz out past about 35 megahertz or so. And we only need up to 32 for this circuit. So these are the comb frequencies that are being mixed with the local oscillator uh, to create the 52.5 megahertz signal that is going into the second mixer.
Okay, to get a visual idea of how uh, this bandpass filter is used to select just a 52.5 MHz component as we tune the VFO across, let's take a look at the output of that filter as we adjust the VFO. So the scope is showing the signal out of that uh, bandpass filter. So if we adjust our megahertz dial here, which is our first VFO, we can see as I tune it up, that signal goes away. And if I keep tuning it up in frequency, we get a signal that comes back there again. And that's now at our 2 megahertz frequency selection. Keep going, there's a 3 megahertz frequency selection. And we can see the peak of that signal corresponds with this LED going out. So each time that LED goes out, we've essentially selected the next 1 megahertz section of the receive frequency band. Okay, to take a look at how effective the Wadley loop is in removing drift from that first wideband VFO, I've got a test signal going into the receiver with a little bit of an audio loop. And we'll leave that running in the background here. Now, if I tune the main or the tuning dial just uh, less than 10 kilohertz off, that signal completely goes away. There it is on frequency, and 10 kilohertz the other way, the signal has completely gone away. So we can see that that signal is not very wide-banded, so any small amount of drift would cause that signal to drift out of the passband. But let's take a look at what happens with frequency changes on the wideband VFO at the front end. The frequency of that is shown up front here, so it's at 56.5 MHz right now, uh, tuning in this 1.5 MHz RF signal. Uh, if we adjust this uh, wideband VFO, let's go down low first. I'm more than 100 kilohertz below our target and the signal is still perfectly receivable. So I'm more than 150 kilohertz below and uh, we're still perfectly receivable. Let's go the other way past 56.5 and go the other way 56.6, 56.7 so we're more than 200 kilohertz away on the other side so a ton of frequency drift if you will or frequency offset back and forth on this megahertz dial with no change in the receiver because that Wadley loop is canceling that drift from that one megahertz uh, from the wideband VFO. So what this allows us to do is select a one megahertz frequency range and then tune through that using a, a second VFO whose uh, frequency stability is controlled by a crystal oscillator, thus very stable. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Wadley loop and its application in this really nice uh, FRG7 receiver. Uh, and again, sometimes useful to take a look at some old tech like this because it might provide you some ideas of how to solve problems you might be looking at today. You know, if you like the video, like give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and tell your friends. And as always, thanks again for watching.